Hello Helldivers and welcome to another Helldivers 2 news video. Today we have the trailer for the newest upcoming Warbond Viper Commandos and all of the juicy details that come with it. From what I've seen it's going to be the best Warbond we've ever gotten in the game and judging by my last video I'm sure you know I think the game really needs that right now. Destiny has had its hold on me for the past couple of days and I'll start uploading content for that as well because I gotta be honest the game is freaking awesome at the moment. But without further ado let's get into this trailer and all of the information. I'll first let the trailer play out and after that we'll go in with all of our thoughts and we'll go through the PlayStation blog where they detail what exactly is coming in the Warbond. So the first thing that really makes an impression on me is that the planet is very jungle-like and you can correct me if I'm wrong but honestly I've never seen a planet that is this much different from all of the wastelands we've been fighting through. This looks much more lively and interesting and it leads me to think that maybe they've started working on new biomes. Again, it's not that different from the planets that we've had previously where it's let's say a bog or a marsh or something like this, but it's still something that looks kind of new, at least to me. And the first thing that is featured is new patterns, which means that yes, finally we are getting some sort of customization in the game. Game. You'll be able to customize the Pelican 1, your exosuits and your drop pods, which is pretty awesome. Most likely the Pelican 1 will be customizable only by the person who has started the mission and who is leading the party and the same probably goes for the drop pods. Even the resupply crates maybe are different and can be customized for this I am not 100% certain but that's what it looks to me. It shows up for just a second. We then see the exosuit and it looks absolutely amazing with the new pattern and I gotta admit yeah we've been wanting this for a while. Then we get a very nice view of the two new armor sets and victory poses and yes you heard that right only two new armor sets but they're much more on theme with the warbond and there's a very good reason why it's only two of them which we'll get to in a little bit so I gotta admit I'm kind of happy it's better to get two really good ones than three kinda height ones. And since these armor sets feature exposed skin, you will actually be able to customize the skin color of your Helldiver, which I think is really cool and you will never see me with anything other than the well tanned ones because, well, it's summer and I like to be tanned. The new capes also look pretty great, but they're capes, they don't have any effects, so I don't care. After that, we finally get a look at the AR-23A Liberator Carbine. It's our newest primary for the world bond and surprisingly enough it's the only one we get so it better be damn good. Next up we have a secondary shotgun, a sawed off shotgun, the SG-22 Bushwhacker. It looks freaking spectacular, it comes with 3 barrels and wow. It does hella damage. Next up, something I am betting nobody expected, and even though I used to do leaks, I didn't expect as well, a special throwable, the K2 throwing knife. You will be able to throw knives at bugs and robots. It seems really ineffective in a real world scenario, but we'll see how it does in the game. I am doubtful but hopeful. And then we get a nod to the Predator movies with a really nice shot of the new team emote which goes back to the meme of Arnold and the guy that played Apollo Creed and you know that iconic scene where they dap each other up. This warbond is much more bare bones quote unquote so they really need to deliver with this one and honestly at least judging by the trailer everything looks pretty damn cool and I'm excited that we are finally 
getting some sort of customization, but I am really hopeful that this won't be the first and last time we do so. Next up, Baskinator spoke about this on the PlayStation blog and let's run through it because there's some very cool information about the Warbond and what's coming next. Firstly, we have been listening to your feedback as we develop our Warbonds in general. The idea behind each Warbond is to allow our Helldivers to roleplay their favorite soldier fantasies within our universe, but it's important that these are fantasies that actually appeal to our players. Based on player input, we are changing our approach to Warbonds moving forward in a couple of ways. Firstly, we are slowing down the pace at which we release Warbonds to give us a little bit more time to polish these designs before they are released. We don't want to rush anything out of the oven before it's fully baked. Secondly, we're changing the arrangement of items in each warbond to make room for new item types and also higher quality armor and weapons. This will prevent us from simply adding more of everything, which can lead to weapons that feel redundant and uninteresting armor. It's time to focus on quality over quantity. When we started researching for Viper Commandos, we wanted to be sure we answered our player calls for stronger theming that coordinates across all the items, more emotes, unique armor passives and more thoughtful designs rather than simply giving more of the same. We cannot wait for players to get a hold of our latest edition, so let's dive into what's in store. And honestly, depending on the quality of a warbond, it might be the right move, because let's be honest, if a warbond comes every month but it's absolutely unimpactful and just more of the same, no one would really buy it or care about it. So what cadence would be best? I hope they go with something like 6 weeks, because if we have to wait 2 months in between each warbond, they'll have to release other stuff in the game to keep players engaged. But I am fully behind this decision to finally start giving us warbonds which are very well themed and very well researched and are not just Okay, here's a new armor with the same passive, so it just looks different. So let's start off with the weapons. For a primary, we're giving you a new version of the Liberator. Oh my god, another one. They better buff ARs. The AR-23A Liberator Carbine, but this one has a modified, shortened form factor that handles differently from the true classic, with a bit higher recoil but faster handling that feels perfect for spraying and praying up close. You can combine carrying that with the new SG-22 Bushwhacker triple barreled sawed off shotgun with two different firing modes, including one that fires all three barrels at once. Yes, you read that right, this shotgun is a secondary weapon, meaning that you can equip your favorite AR primary or your favorite shotgun primary and keep the bushwhacker handy for close encounters. And I gotta be honest, it seems like this will probably do a lot of freaking damage. I am super here for it, I can't wait to get it in my hands and I really pray it just does ridiculous amounts of damage. And let's get to the armors, you will see exactly why I said this is coming straight out of the Predator movies. For the armors, they are nothing short of inspired. Catch me in the PH9 Predator, inspired by a veteran of the Viper Commandos who was said to have held off an entire Terminate brood with nothing but a machine gun, pocket knife and an orbital laser. The headpiece is a beret and it looks devastatingly cool when combined with the Mark of the Crimson Fang cape. And yeah, even the armor is named the Predator, so you know you are basically going in as Arnold Schwarzenegger. We also have the PH202 Twig Snapper for your jungle heavy, which looks awesome with the Executioner's Canopy Cape, although mixing and matching works great for both of these sets. And yeah, it's good to know that we're getting a medium and a heavy armor, but we'll also need a light one. Both armors in this warbond have the Peak Physique passive, which improves melee damage and weapon handling. They both also feature bare arms and bulging biceps with a variety of customized skin tones to keep you sweat free when diving in the humid atmosphere. And I'm not gonna lie, if these armor sets were just in the superstore, I would have bought them for real money anyways, but I'm really glad they're coming in the warbond itself since it also has some other cool things. Patterns boosters and more. Another exciting addition to the Warbond is new skins for your Hellpods, Exosuits and Pelican 1, inspired by the classic Woodland and Tiger Stripe camouflage patterns. This pushes that customizable fantasy just a little bit further for a really cohesive look for your squad. Now just imagine they start doing this for weapons as well, that would be really awesome. And do you remember all of the leaks about weapon customization? being, you know, different barrels and stuff, I cannot wait to see that in game. This absolutely raises my excitement for Helldivers 2 back up and I cannot wait to get to playing it. 
after I'm done with Destiny. Let's get back to the blog post. One of the things in the Viper Commandos that's cool is our new utility item, the Throwing Knife. Imagine mowing down a crowd of terminates and running out of ammo with only one bug remaining and no time to reload. So you dive backwards and throw a hunting knife into its carapace right before it descends on you. Honestly, we'll see how much damage it does and how it even works because they just call it a utility item. I'm not sure what it would replace and where you would pick it. Would you always have the throwing knife? Uh, there's so many questions. There's also a new booster called Experimental Infusion, which gives your stims the added bonus of boosting your movement speed and reducing the damage you take for a short time. And that does sound incredible, but it would be good only if this boost comes after your stim effect has expired because your stims already max out your sprint speed and they are already making you pretty much undamageable. So imagine after this effect is over, you get the effect of experimental infusion. Now that would make it a must equip booster and it would make it worth the price of admission. And finally something that they do not mention in the blog post but I absolutely think it's worth mentioning is that you will get a player title called the Viper Commando which I gotta admit it's really freaking cool and I'm going to put it on and I won't take it off for a very long time. But that's about it for the video guys. If you enjoyed it make sure you hit the like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you very soon in the next one.